Lawmakers now holding their noses. That's because for all the headlines about the Bush tax cuts being preserved for millions of Americans, uh, the deal in D.C. still taxes three quarters of Americans, and it barely contains a dime in spending cuts and adds four trillion dollars to the national debt. All that was too much for my next guest, Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, among the 151 Republicans voting no on the House side. And good morning to you, and thank you for your time. Good morning. What did you not like about this, other than everything? <laughs> well, as you've said, there's a lot not to like about the bill. Uh, it doesn't have spending cuts. It doesn't show any kind of fiscal restraint. It continues to give some of these special interest tax breaks that we've said need to be off the books. And it runs up the long-term debt. And I'm one of those House conservatives that has just said, you people that are kicking the can, give me the can. Because what we're going to do is draw a line in the sand and start demanding that you don't bring anything forward unless you have the spending cuts. Yeah. There's some Republicans who did vote for it, including yeah. the House Speaker and others. Why? I, you know, uh, that's a question to ask them. I never speak for anyone else. And I know some liked the idea that there was permanency in the tax code. And yes, indeed, that is something we have fought for. But Bill, the deal is this. If we hadn't been fighting for these things, uh, there's no telling how bad it would have been. And what we have to do is make certain that spending cuts are first and foremost in the mind of the American people. We cannot continue to run a four billion dollar a day deficit, a trillion dollar a year deficit, and have a sixteen trillion dollar plus national debt. We cannot afford this. It's yeah, too I, much I government think, to afford. I don't think you would find a lot of disagreement if you walk the halls of the Capitol on that. But but right. so often on the outside what we hear about are politicians fighting for political victories and, and not fighting for how the country can win. Well, and that's exactly right. Good policy should make good politics. And what we need to be thinking about is the next generation. Our children and our grandchildren, look, when you have this amount of debt, what we are doing is taking the futures of our little children and grandchildren that are dreaming big dreams, kids that are in elementary school and middle school and high school, and we're saying, look, we're going to cap your future and trade it to the people that own this debt. It has to be dealt with, and the people that created it, they've got to deal with it. And if but they don't know, have courage... But you know this takes guts. These are big, big decisions. Do you it think? Is. Do you think this president has the guts to do it? Well, I was very disappointed in his demeanor and the comments that he made last night, wanting no fight over the debt ceiling. Are you kidding me? You know, uh, people are demanding, our constituents are demanding that we focus on this. And I had constituents who said, Marcia, if you need to raise my taxes, raise my taxes. They changed their tune when they found out that the money from the additional taxes it did not go to pay down the debt, but was going to be used to incentivize guess what more spending people have had it Washington you, needs to be put on a mega diet do you think and good luck with that I mean we've been waiting <laughs> I mean the American people are waiting yeah do, you, do yeah. you believe and do you buy Mitch McConnell's argument the Republican senator on the Senate side from Kentucky but when he says we play with a much stronger hand when it comes to fighting over the debt ceiling in order to enact the spending cuts and get the entitlement reform do you buy that? I, I tell you, I think our strongest hand is when we say no. No, you're not going to be able to spend more money. I think every federal department and agency should do what Republicans in the House have done. We voted to cut our budgets by 11% across the board. Across the board cuts work. Our states use them. Local governments use them. The federal government is not exempt from this. They need to make these cuts. We have to get this fiscal house in order. We have to deal with the trust funds, which are Social Security and Medicare. And we've got to worry about the next generation, not the next election. Marsha Blackburn, thank you. We thank await you. the next 60 days. Appreciate your time. 18 passed. Absolutely. Marcel. Thank you. All right, Bill. New developments.